So now we are together, people that chose to use star or people that used to that decided to use uh, feature counts. So I'm showing here the history with the feature count, but the people with star will still be able to, to follow. So in the tutorial, what is suggested is to determine which uh, is the gene that has a more count uh, into the data sets. And so what we have is either if we use star or if we use feature counts is that we have a file which contains first column, the ID, and the second column, the count. And in order to know which one has the highest number of reads, we can use a tool that is called sort. So on the left panel, we click on sort data. And what we want to use is uh, the collection. And here, uh, if you followed feature counts, you have the counts. So feature counts, blah, 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 counts. And if you follow the star, you have feature count like uh, counts. The number of header lines, this depends. So if you use feature counts, you have one header line. If you use star, just put zero. And what we want to, to sort is to sort column two and in descending order. So the highest number will be on top. We leave everything by default and we run the tool. I make a stop pause, a, sorry, a short break here. So the sort tool finished. I can click here to see the result. And if I select the 77, it's going to preview. And we can see that the top one is 28, 4, 2, 4, 5. And if we check in the second one, it's the same one. Sometimes it can be very useful to see the data set side by side. And for this, Galaxy has a, a mode, which is the window manager. So we can click here. And then when we click on the eye, it generates a new window. And we click on the other one. And it generates another window. And then we can move the window. So they are aside, one to the other. And this way, we can scroll down both and compare. When you want to leave this mode, you just unclick on the window manager, and you can close the windows, or you can reduce them if you want to see them afterward. OK, so if I come back to the tutorial, we finished the first part, which was to count number of reads per gene. Uh, we did it only on two data sets. And therefore, um, I will I propose you to do it on the other data sets, where you can find the links here. So you can see that you have both uh, pairs and single reads. And here you have um, all the information on how to run this on the single read, there are really few changes. So if you want to check that you understood the steps, you can, you can do this. And if not, we can, or even if you do it, we can go on with the second part, which is based on, on the counts and where we will be able to identify which are the genes that have been regulated by Pasila into this experiment of the Drosophila cells that receive the RNAe interference treatment. So in order to um, gain time, we already pre-processed the seven data sets and we put it on the nodal. So we will be able to import all of the seven data sets uh, into, from uh, Eurovel. Just uh, as I said previously, it's uh, easier if you if you have one history per analysis. And 
I would say that this second part is like a new analysis. So first of all, we will create a new history, clicking on the plus, and in, we will immediately rename it. So you click on the pencil uh, right to the unnamed history, and we will call it GTN reference based basic part two. And then I click on save and the name of my history changed. I come back to the training material and I just copy all links, click outside, go to upload data, paste page data, I paste, and then I start I close and I wait that the download starts. So the upload has finished. And uh, again, we will compact all this data set into a collection. But this time, we don't have a paired end collection, but just a collection that we call a list. So I will click on the checkbox, which is on top left of the data sets. And then I click on right, select all. For the all seven selected, I bid a data set list. So here I see that I have my seven samples. And for each of them, I have the feature counts counts. Um, so I could have done the same analysis with the star counts uh, because the results are really similar. But just so we are all on the same page, uh, we take the feature counts counts. And um, these labels will be uh, used for all the plots, all the results. So it's important to re-label them the way we would like to them to appear on the plots and the results. So I will double click or click simply and remove the feature counts counts. So I just have the, the name GSM to so the ID and then uh, the treatment and then the pair and or the single end. So this is something that you don't really like to do, but you need to do it up. up. So now we have all seven. And uh, what we will do is to just give a name to this collection and uh, we can call them all counts. Sorry, counts. I leave the checkbox mode by clicking on the checkbox. And now I have one data set, which is a list of seven data sets, which is all counts. I come back to the tutorial as I will do a bit of theory. So um, here is an example of what we could have obtained. Uh, just if we have four genes, A, B, C, D, they have variable length, and we have three samples, one, two, and three. And here are the counts. So you can see, um, and you can imagine that if we are doing full length mapping, uh, full, full length library, so that means that we have G, uh, mRNA and we shear the RNA before doing the library. The longest the gene is, the more reads it will have. And the shortest the gene is, the lowest number it will have. Additionally, depending how much you sequence to your sample, you may have a bias that is linked to the sequencing depth. So for example, you can see that here between gene A and gene B, gene B is twice longer and you have more or less twice number of reads. And in fact, this would indicate that they are as much expressed gene A and gene B. And then uh, you have also the sequencing depth. So for example, the sample one has only 35 counts, while the sample three has much more. So these are the two factors that we need to normalize for. And in fact, depending uh, in which order we normalize for them, 
we generate what we call uh, FPKM or FPKM. This is just a pair and or single read, uh, or TPM tag per million. So uh, here you have the different explanation. And for example, for the RPKM, you just divide uh, first by the sequencing depths. And we generate a, a scaling factor just by summing the number of uh, reads that have been assigned to genes per sample. And then we divide by this. So this means that now uh, the sum uh, of each is the same. And then we divide by the length of the gene. So if we divide by the length, we can see now that uh, the the two gene one and gene B have the same uh, the same RPKM value. So the difference between FPKM fragment per kilobase million and RPKM read per kilobase million is just the paired and or single read. The other uh, acronym that we can see is TPM transcript per kilobase million. And it's the same, but you invert the operation. So first you divide by the, the size of the gene. So you divide by 2 kb or 4 kb. And then you divide by the sequencing depth. So it gives you more uh, the proportion of, uh, of the each transcript into your library. And as a consequence, when you do uh, the sum of all the RPKM value or FPKM value, you have a constant numbers when you do RPKM. Uh, sorry, you have a constant number when you do TPM, while you may have different numbers when you do RPKM. OK, this was uh, how you can normalize your data to generate FPKM or RPKM or TPM. However, none of this normalization take into account the library composition. Um, and here is an example on uh, what could happen uh, if you have a, a gene which is expressed into a single of your sample. So let's imagine we have the gene D, uh, which is just overexpressed uh, into into the sample one and was not expressed into sample two, while the other genes were expressed similarly. If you normalize uh, with the FPKM or uh, TPM, you will see that all genes are affected. So all um, A, B, E, F uh, are more expressed in sample two, and D is uh, less expressed in sample two. But in fact, this is just due to the library composition, and we should find as a result that only D is expressed. And for this, we use an algorithm that is called DSEC2. Uh, and this is one of the gold standard that people use to do differential gene expression. And this will normalize for sequencing depth and library composition. So if you want the detail on how DSEC2 is normalizing the data, you can click here and it's explained. However, I will not go through it and just uh, tell you that DSEC2 will do uh, the estimate the biological variance. So it will normalize the data first and then estimate the biological variance using the replicates and then estimate the significance of the expression changes between uh, two conditions. Um, importantly, you need at least two replicates to do this differential analysis. And three is better, or uh, even five, if it would be possible. Um, what is interesting is that DSEC2 allows to compute these statistics, knowing some uh, factors that can be uh, biased into your analysis. So for example, in this configuration, you remember that we have seven samples. We have three that are uh, treated and four that are controls. And we also have both paired and single end. And we know that the sequencing type may affect the counting. 
So it is good to specify to this algorithm that we have this sequencing type. And this is something that this actor will take into account and correct for it when it will determine what is um, differentially expressed. OK, so first, uh, we need to use the name that we used for the count in order to attribute some tags to our data sets. And this will be used then by dissect. So to do so, we will just first extract the element identifiers. And this is the tool that you can access by clicking here, or you can go there and do um, its uh, extract element identifiers. And then you just check all counts. And this will give you a list with so um, a data set that is a text file where you will have seven lines that correspond exactly to these seven labels. We need to wait a bit that it's run. And then what we will do is to generate a new text file, a tabular, where we will put the name of the identifiers followed by different columns saying group, so the group that they belong to. So we will use a tool which is called replace text. We can also find it uh, with the search bar. Replace text in anterior line. And we will apply it to extract element identifier. So here it's a bit complicated. So what we will have in this text file is this. So GSM blah, 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 underscore untreat, underscore single. And here we will do what we call a regular expression. So what we would do is to say that what we have in the line is something that we want to capture. And um, then there is an underscore. There is something else that we want to capture. Then there is an underscore. And finally, there is again something that we want to capture. Dot means any character. Star means as many as possible, or as many as we need. And so this will be match capture what is before an underscore, between an underscore, and at the end of an underscore. And then what we will do is to replace. And what we want is to get them back uh, into with the, uh, the, we can get them using this. So what we do is we do backslash, so you can copy it from here, one. So this will be the first, the GSM, blah, blah, blah. And what we want is to reproduce the same label. So GSM, blah, 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 again, untreat or treat, and then single. This will be just to get as we had at the beginning. But now we would put a tabulator, so it's a backslash T. And we will add into another column group, oh, sorry, group. And then we will get the second one, so which will be treat or untreat. And then a third column, so underscore tab tabulation, so underscore, uh, sorry, backslash T, group, and three. So to be sure, the best way is just to copy this from the tutorial and to put it in, inside. Okay, and then we run the tool. So I come back to my history. And when these two are done, I just resume the video. This step may, may appear a bit obscure for some of you. So we will just check the outputs. Um, so you can see that now we have 
the name, which matches what is the identifiers of the all counts. And then we have group and we extracted the second part. So untreat, treat, 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 untreat. And then we have the single paired, single, etc. Okay, great. So now we can go back, check what is the data set, the data type, sorry, it's a txt and I would txt, sorry. And I would like to have a tabula. To change the data set, I will just click on the pencil and then go to data type and the new type, I type tabula. And I select the tabula. Oops, sorry. Ta then I do save. And now you can see that it's a tabula. And if I display it, now it's more separated and aligned. Right, so now we can use the tool to assign tags. So it's tag elements. And we will tag the elements which are all counts, and we will tag using yeah the replace. And we'll run this tool. Oh, okay. So I need to wait that it's has been accepted as a tabular. Yes, it's a bit slow. I just pause the video. It's done. I can run the tool. And now I have a new collection. And you can see that they have tags and that correspond to their name. And these tags can be further used into the next step. So we will run DSEC2, which is an algorithm that allows to identify the genes that are significantly differentially expressed between two conditions or more. And uh, so here we will click on the tool, DSEC2, that you can also find if you go into the tool search. And we will just select group tags with levels. And this is how we manage. This is why we put these tags. So the count file collection, we need to choose the collection that have the tags. And we will just specify which are the factors, so the, the differences between the groups. So just so I match exactly what's here. Uh, so this factor name, we will call it treatment. This is the factor name. And then we have the level, so the different values for treatment. We have one which will be treated. And for this, we will select the group treat. So I click here, and you can see the tags that are proposed, so treat. And then I will insert another factor level, so another value for the treatment. I click and I put entry. it. And I select the group entry. Okay, so this is the main factor. So this is the factor for which we would like to know which are the differences. And then we will specify to the algorithm detect two that we have a factor that may introduce a bias. And this factor is the sequencing. So I just check. Um, yeah, sequencing. And for the sequencing, we have two values, one which is paired end. And for this one, we select the paired. And then we have another one, which is single end. We can also say single read. And this is single. Okay, I just check. Yes. 
So then do the file have a header? For this, I just need to click here and I can see, so I clicked on the name, sorry, on the level. And I can see that indeed these files have a header. So I put yes. And which type of count they are. So they are feature counts. And in the output options, I just want to have the plots to, to have the results. And I, I also need to have yeah, the normalized counts. So as I said, DSEC2 is a, using a normalization, which is not FPKM or TPM, because it takes into account the library composition. So we're interested to have this normalized. OK, and then I just run the tool. I go back to my history. And I see that there will be three outputs, one which is the normalized counts, so a big table with all the counts. Then there will be some plots. And finally, the result file, which is a table that will tell me for each gene, uh, which uh, is a log to fall change, and which is a p-value and the adjusted p-value. OK, I pause the video here and come back when it's done. So now it's done and uh, we can check the results. So as I said, the first, the result file is a table. And we have one row per gene. So the gene ID, the base mean is the average uh, expression across normalized expression across all samples. So the, all the seven samples. Then there is an estimation of the log to fall change. And then there is a standard error on the log to fall change. So how much you're confident with this value of the log to fall change? Then there is a statistic called stats. And then there is a p value and an adjusted p value. So why do we have both? So the p value is the probability that uh, that the we would have such a difference um, if the data were randomly distributed and if we do, would not have any difference for real. And because we are computing a lot of tests, because we have a lot of genes, we need to correct for that. Because if not, let's say we use a threshold of 5%, just by chance, we would have 5% of genes that would be significant. So to correct for that, we used a P adjusted. So it's adjusted for the fact that we did a lot of tests. So this is the first result. The second one are the plots. So I click on the eye to display them. So the first one um, is a PCA. So it's an analysis that is relatively common to do in Evanesic. It's how to represent the variation that we see between the samples into a plot of two dimension. And we will just represent on the x-axis the first PCA, so the, 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 the component that shows the most of variance. We can see here it's 50% of variance that is explained in this axis. And then we take another direction that will be pep orthogonal. And the PCA2 is the second one that have the more that explains the more the variance. It explains 33% of variance. That means that Using this plot, we explain 81% of the variance, which is a lot. And what we can see that the most variance is explained on the first. So on the left, we see we have untreated single, untreated paired. And on the right, we have treat single, untreated paired. And this is a very good news. That means that on the left, we have the untreated. And on the right, we have the treated. So the, the main variation comes from the treatment. You remember that we treated the drosophila cells with RNA interference to decrease the expression of the pacilla gene. So this explains the more variation between samples. And the second variation, 33%, is explained by the sequencing. So you can see that you have single, 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 on top, and bad, 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 bad on bottom. So, this is a good result. 
And then you have here the sample to sample distance. So we have uh, each row and each column is a sample. And so on the diagonal, it's the distance between the sample with itself. So it's zero, there is no distance. But uh, if you take if you take a square, this represents distance between this sample, so the 77, and this sample, the 80. And you can see the distance is uh, relatively large. On top, you have a clustering. So that means that how can we group the samples together? And the, the length of the branches indicates how far they are. So for example, we can say that these two are the two closest samples. So they are 80 and 81, and they are both treated paired. And then we have these two, which are also very close, the 77 and 78, which are both untreated paired. And then if you follow the tree, you can see that the first separation is between two groups, one group with four samples, and they are all untreated, and one group with three samples where they are all treated. And this confirmed what we have with the PCA, which that the effect, what is driving the difference between the seven samples is the treatment. Here we have a plot of the dispersion estimate, so how much for each dot is a is a gene, and how much uh, the there is a dispersion. And on the x-axis we have the mean normalized counts. So on the right it's highly expressed genes, and on the left it's lowly expressed genes. Here we have the histogram of the p-values. So uh, what is on the left is significant, what is on the right is non-significant. And finally, we have a MA plot. So it's mean and fall change. So uh, we have on the x-axis the mean uh, expression. So what is on the right is highly expressed, what is on the left is lowly expressed. And on the y-axis, we have the log two fold change. So what is high is highly expressed in the treated and lowly expressed in untreated and the contrary here. And in blue is what is uh, significant. Okay, and the last output is the normalized count file. So it's a table where it each row is a gene, you can see here the gene IDs, and each column is a sample, and you have a header with the name that we gave to the collection. Okay, um, so once we have these results, up, I go down into the tutorial, what we would like to do is to annotate the results because everything in the dsec2 result file, so this table, is labeled with a gene ID, but usually we are more familiar with gene names. And this gene name does not appear in this table here. So we will be able to add it using the GTF. So if you remember, we used the GTF into the first part of the, of the tutorial. So we will use um, the side-by-side -side history view of Galaxy. On the right, you click on the little arrow and you put show history side-by-side. -side. Um, what you have is sometimes you have your history but if you don't have it, for example, if it's like this, you go to select histories and then you will select your current history. And you also need to take the part one that we used uh, previously. And then you click on add selected. Now they are side by side. You have the part one and the part two. And what you want is to look for the GTF on the 
part one, which was just before the star here, and you will move it into the part two, and it will now be here, but also on the right on your current history. Okay, so now we can just use the tool which allows to annotate. So it's uh, annotate DC2 output table. And the tabular output is dsec2 result. And it's a dsec2 file. And we give the GTF. We run the tool. It's done, and I can check, clicking on the eye icon, what is the result. So we still have the same first column, so G90, average, uh, normalized expression, log to fold change. We have the error on the log to fold change, the statistic, the p-value, adjusted p-value. And now we have the coordinates of the gene. So chromosome start end, the strands, the type, putting coding here, and then the gene name. So now we can see that uh, because it's sorted by the decreasing, uh, increasing, sorry, p-value, so the most significantly are on top, we can see that the gene, which is the most differentially expressed is PARC. And this is a gene that is, if we check the log to fold change, it's negative. So that means that it's under, it's it decreased in the treated. And we can see, for example, the, the most increased gene is this one, which is ANT2, ANT2. And what we need to check uh, is the Pacilla gene because if you remember the design of the experiment, everything is based on the treatment with RNA interference that is supposed to decrease the expression of Bacilla gene. So if we go down, we can find Bacilla, which is hopefully not so down in the list. And we can check and look at the adjusted p-value. It's minus 10 minus 29, so it's highly significant. And if we have uh, the, if we check the log to fall change, it's here, it's minus 1.6. So it's indeed decreased into the treated samples. Oof, everything is good. Um, so what is missing here is a header. So because uh, I can tell you what is inside, but maybe it's better to have a header. So what we will do is we go to the tutorial and we go here. There is a hands-on add column names and we will just copy this line and we will create a new file. So we go to upload data, best page data. We just paste and we say that it's a tabular. Oops, tabular, this one. We start, and then, oh, I should have given a name. Um, what we will do is to concatenate, so to put this one on top of the annotated. So the way we do it is that we use concatenate datasets, take to head, and the first one to take is a name dataset, even if I should have given a name, and then this is top and bottom we want to put annotate. And this, I can run the tool. I pause the video and come back when it's done. So it's done. I just have a look, clicking on the eye to check that everything went smoothly. So we indeed have gene ID, base mean, log to fold change, standard error on the log to fold change. Well, stat p value p adjusted chromosome stat and 
strand feature engine name perfect. So now what we will do is to rename these data sets because we, we are going to use it. Uh, so to do so, we I click on the pencil right to the concatenate and I give it a meaningful name. So it's proposed to call it annotated dissect to results. Perfect. And so now uh, we would like to know how many genes are um, differentially expressed. Of course, it depends, which is a definition that you use for differentially expressed. But uh, usually people use 5% of the adjusted p-value. And this is up to you to choose 1% or even less. Um, so we are going to filter for the the rows that have a p adjusted below 0 0.05 and to do so uh, we used a tool which is called filter data on any column using simple expression on the annotated dissector result and what the condition is uh, c7 for the column 7 below 0 0.05 and there is one uh, header that we would like to skip. Perfect, I run the tool. And I just wait that it's green. So the filtering is done. Uh, we can click on the filter to have a bit of details. So we filtered using the C7 below 0 0.05, and it's written that we kept 4% of the lines. And at the end, we can also check here 967 lines. So we know we have a header. That means that we have 966 genes that are significantly um, expressed. So we will just uh, rename this output, just click on the um, pencil and rename it genes with significant, yeah, it's correct, significant adjusted p value. And we save. Perfect. Now we will do an additional filtering to only get the genes that have more than two fold change differences. So either that are overexpressed twofold or underexpressed twofold, that means that are uh, below half the expression. And to do so, if I click on the eye to check what's inside, um, we have a column that is log two fold change. And so a fold change of two in log two, it's one. So we want to have either below minus one or above one. And a way to write this directly is just to use the absolute value. So just say that the absolute value of this should be above one. So we will use again the filter tool. This time on the genes with significant adjusted. And we will use the absolute value of it's the colon three, C3 should be above one. And there is a header that we want to keep. I run the second filtering step. Okay, so filter has run. We can check clicking on the title. So we filtered with absolute of C3 above one and it kept 12%. Uh, of the valid lines. So in total, we have now 114 lines. And so we will again rename it. Gene, oh, sorry. Genes with significant adjusted p value and absolute log to full change. 
above one. Okay, we can have a look at this table, which now is really, let's say, small. And we can have a look to the gene name. So we have still Spark and two, and we still have Pacilla, which is reassuring. Good, so now we have a selection of the genes uh, that are uh, significantly expressed, but also um, with a high fold change. And we would like to visualize them uh, using a heat map. So I go to the tutorial. We are now in the visualization. And um, so just to tell you that there are two advanced tutorials on visualization that you may be interested in. Uh, the one which will use HitMap 2, which is a tool that we are going to do now, and another one about volcano plots. So if you're interested, do not hesitate to click on these links and check the tutorials. So what we would like to do is to visualize the expression in each of our samples for these 113 genes. And I don't know if you remember, but we have a table with all the expression. And this is the one which is normalized counts, blah, blah, blah. But of course, this file contains all genes. It's quite a lot. But hopefully, there is the gene ID, which is here which matches what, she, what, what is in the data set that we just created. So a way to subset the big file with the expression and only get the genes that are significant and with a large fold change, we will use a tool which is called join. So it's join two files. So it's join two files, sorry, on column, no. Join two that is side by side on a specified field. And you can also access it just, yeah, clicking here. This way there is less, it's less error prone. So what we want to join is on the left, we would like to have the normalized counts. So it's here, normalized counts, file and data, blah, blah, blah. And the gene ID was in column one. And we would like to join it with the last output that we have. So the gene with significant adjusted p-value and absolute log to fold change above one. And it's the gene IDs are also in column one. So we want to keep the line first input that do not join. No, because this is what we are using to restrict and keep the line of the first input that are incomplete, we leave, no. Do we keep the header line? Yes. And now we can run the tool. The join has finished. Let's have a look. So we click on the I icon. So now we have First of all, not so many lines. So it has indeed restricted to the differentially expressed genes. Then on the columns, we have the normalized expression, and then we have gene ID and everything that was into the dsec 2 output that we don't need. So what we will do is just, is just to cut to, to get only the first columns. So this is a tool that we already used. Uh, cut columns from a table, and we will take the column one, which is the gene ID, plus the seven next columns, which are the normalized expression. So in total, we go from C1 to C8. And it's from join. Yes, so we run the tool. So it's done. 
I check with the eye that I get what I wanted to have. So first column IDs and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have all my samples. Perfect. I just rename this data set and I will rename it um, normalized for the most differentially expressed genes. Okay. And now I will be able to display it as a heat map. So a heat map is a way to summarize the information. And instead of displaying the values, we will use a gradient of colors. So the heat map tool we are using is heat map two. And so as input, uh, we will use the, that we just created, the normalized count. We don't need to put any, put any plot title. Um, we will transform the data. So we transform in log two, uh, value plus one. So we do plus one. So first of all, if we have zeros, it will not uh, raise an error um, because uh, log is only defined for absolute positive. And the other advantage of log of one plus is that it only generates positive data. And what we will do is that we will only label the columns and not the rows because we have still 112 genes. And so if we display the gene levels, they will uh, overlap one each other. And for the column, you can choose the color map you want, uh, but I suggest that we use a two color. And then I run the tool. So the result is now available. I click on the eye and I can see it. So what we see is that on the X axis, we have our samples seven samples and we have a clustering and we can see that on the selected genes, the the treats would go together and the untreat would go together. And within them, uh, we can see that we have the two pairs that go together. And similarly on the untreated, we have the two pairs and the two single confirming that there is still an influence on the sequencing way. Um, if we check each row is a gene and the color indicates the log two of one plus um, level of normalized expression. And we can see, for example, that we have one group of gene here where it's uh, underexpressed to the treated. And uh, here we have a mix of genes. Uh, so these genes are on the contrary overexpressed. And here we have again underexpressed, overexpressed. And finally, here we have genes that are here overexpressed and here underexpressed, but usually they have a lower value. And in fact, this is how the clustering is done. It's by close, by proximity in the normalized value and not in the behavior. So all the upregulated are not together and the downregulated are not together. If we want to have this, it's better to work with Z score. So if you go to the tutorial, um, if you go to the visualization, uh, it's written here what exactly is a Z score. So a z-score is a measurement how far it is from the mean uh, and it's normalized to be in standard deviation. So if we have a z-score of two plus two means that it's two standard deviation above the mean and minus one would be one standard deviation below the mean. And here are the way to compute z-score on all genes if you're interested in that, but fitmap allows to display directly the z-score 
and we will have something that is like this. So let's do it. We would rerun the heat map too. We can either click here to have a clean form to regenerate the plot, or we can use um, something which is in, available in Galaxy to rerun the job. So we will do this. We click on the 31 item and we click on the arrow that is making a circle, but the job again. And because we are just changing few parameters, we will use this. So we don't change the data transformation. And we say that we would like to compute Z scores uh, prior to clustering on the rows. So that in each gene is, uh, will be set to, to compute the, the mean of the gene expression and the standard deviation. And then we leave the rest as it was, except that the gradient, uh, instead of having a gradient with two colors, because we will have the average above the average, below the average, it's better to have a gradient with three colors. So we have a symmetric. And we run the tool. And I come back when it's done. So heat map two has just finished. We click on the eye. And we see the result. So now we can see that the genes that have uh, that are overexpressed are uh, clustered together on the top. And here on the bottom, we have all the genes that are underexpressed following the Pacilla depletion. And then we can see also that we have, for example, a cluster here of genes that are more expressed into the single compared to the paired um, treated samples. And similarly here, we have a cluster of genes that are more expressed into this sample 82 compared to the other untreated samples. Okay, so um, we, I don't know if you remember, but uh, when we selected the genes that were differentially expressed so significantly, we had a list of genes. And sometimes you want to know if they have common features. Uh, and this is what we call uh, gene ontology. So are they associated uh, into, um, into biological process, common biological processes or common compartments, cellular compartments? And so this is what we call the gene ontology analysis. And we will do it with using the tool, which is called GoSec, which allows you to do this type of analysis. So GoSec requires two input data sets. The first one is a tabular, where the first column is a gene ID, and it needs to be uppercase. And the second one is a, a Boolean that say if it's differentially expressed, so true or not differentially expressed, false. And the second one, the second file that uh, GoSec requires is a file with information about the gene length, and it's to correct for bias. So we will first generate the first um, input, which is the true false. So what we will do is to compute an expression, and we will use the DSEC to result. So in, we click on the compute, and we can also look for it. Here we will look for sorry, uh, we will look for the dsec to result file, and uh, do this input as a header. If you don't remember, you just need to scroll down in your history and click on the 18. And you can see that there is no header. What is the expression that you want to compute? So is to convert to Boolean. Um, so I will just copy paste from the tutorial. So you want to convert from Boolean the expression, which is is the float of C7, so the column 7 is a p-adjusted, below 0 0.05. 
And the way you will do is to append. So that means that it will be into uh, a new column, so eighth column. This is the expression. Uh, and then we would like to have an error handling because I did not show you, but you have some rows, so some genes where the P adjusted is NA, not assigned. Um, and so you, this will not fit into this expression. So we don't want to auto detect the column time. And uh, we want to not to fail. And what we would do if we don't manage to compute this expression, we would like to fill in a replacement value that would be false. I just check that it matches. Yes. And rerun the tool. So as I said, this will be a tabular and we will have in the eighth column, the value we're interested in. So what we need to do is to do cut to get only the first column and the eighth column. And we do it on the compute. And we are close to be to have the good input because if you remember, we need the first column to be uppercase. And for this, we have a tool which is change case. And from the cut output, we would change case of the column one to uppercase. And this rerun. So when all these steps will be done, I will resume the video. Everything has run. I will just check the result with the eye. And I indeed have the first column, the gene IDs, all capital letter, and then the true or false. I will rename it. I use the pencil on the right, and I will rename it gene IDs and differential expression. Great, so now what I need to have is the gene length. And now, depending if you use the star or the feature count option, you have two different ways to do. So um, I will use, again, the show history side by side menu. So this should not be here. So we have the first part where um, I have the, the feature counts, and then I need to select my history. And if I use the feature count, I need to take the feature length. Uh, if I used star, it's even uh, easier because I, I may have at the end um, a data set called gene length that I just need to, to drag. So for the feature count, I got a collection. And inside each of the collection, I have the two lengths. And so for, for this, I need to extract the one of the two. And to do so, I would just uh, use the tool. Um, let's just check. Extract data sets. Um, here, extract data set. And from the feature count or lens, uh, we just check the first one. But they are identical, so I can shoot the one I want. And this will be named as the first one, but we know that inside it's the gene length. So what I do is that I um, use the change case 
tool. And again, I need to change the case of the column one and put it uppercase. I will pause my video and resume when it's done. So change case finished, and we will rename the data set to more easily find it in the next step. So we just click on the pencil and rename it um, gene IDs and lengths, I think. Yes, gene IDs and lengths. And save. OK, now we have our two inputs ready for the GoSec analysis. So we use the GoSec tool, differentially expressed gene. So it's gene IDs and differential expression. Uh, gene IDs and lengths. This is this one. It's go. Um, to we can with this tool we can either uh, get the categories from the package that's installed, or we can provide them. So here we will just get the categories because the genome that we are using is available in the list. And the gene ID is ensemble gene ID. This is correct. And first of all, we will use these uh, categories. So the cellular components, biological process, and molecular function. If we go to output options, do we want a plot for the top go terms? Yes. And uh, do we want the diagnostic plot? No. And the extract the differential expression for the categories? Yes. And now we run the tool. I pause the video and come back when it's done. Gosek has finished. Um, so we can see that we have three outputs. Uh, the one on the top, it's the link between uh, the Go terms, so on the left, the categories, and the genes that belong to this category and that are differentially expressed. Then we have a plot that represents the top overrepresented categories in a cellular component, the biological uh, process, and molecular function. And on the x-axis is the percentage of genes uh, that are differentially expressed into this category. And on the color, the darker it is, the more um, uh, significant it is. And the blue lighter it is, the less significant it is. And then the size of the dots represents the number of genes. So for example, on top, we have the extracellular region then the response to stress, oxidoreductase activity, and small molecule met metabolic process. Then we have uh, two gene ontology for which 80% of the genes are differentially expressed, glycogen uh, biosynthesis process and glucan biosynthesis process. Then we have separate junction assembly, establishment of the blood, brain barrier and with less a significant p-value transferase activity and uh, glutathion transferase activity and the last one is a table where each row is a category and then we have a p-value for the the to express if this category is overrepresented a p-value to say if it's un uh, underrepresented, the number of genes that are differentially expressed in this category, the number of genes that belong to this category, the term, so uh, extracellular region, for example, the ontology, so whether it is a cellular component, the biological process, or molecular function, and then we have the adjusted p-value. So what we can do is that if we want to know uh, which are how many and which are the gene ontologies that are significant, so we can check 
which are overrepresented. So this way we select on this column. And if we want to see the underrepresented, we check on this column. So just check what is overrepresented. We will use the uh, filter tool that we already used. So on the GoSec ranked category list, we will select the one that have, uh, it was column eight, I think. Let me just check again here. Yes, column eight is below 0 0.05. And this will give us the, the categories that are overrepresented. And we can do the same for the underrepresented. Just change. Instead of C8, we can do C9. Filter has finished. We can see that there are 69, 60 lines. And um, we have so only 0.5% that are kept. And among them, we have extracellular region response to stress, etc. And if we want to know uh, how many of each category, so it's column seven. We can use a tool which is called group, group data by column. So for this, we would uh, group by column seven. And uh, in operation, we just say that we will count on column one, which is the ID. And we run the tool. Instead of grouping, we could also be interesting is just filtering uh, only cellular component or only biological processes and get the list. So the group tool is running now. Yeah, now it's done. I click on the I and I see that there are 50 biological processes that are enriched, uh, five cellular components and five molecular functions. Okay, something else that I can do with the data is to check the K pathways. So if I go down, um, the Cake Pathway database is a collection of pathway maps, which are like this. So they represent um, a pathway. Each box represents genes. And then there is like a connection between them, like activation or inhibition. And they can have genes, protein, RNAs, chemical compounds, etc. And here we have an example of one of the pathway, which is the ME00010. That is the glycolysis process. And so if we want to perform pathway analysis, so it's just to find if there are among the differentially expressed genes, uh, an enrichment in one of the pathway. So the, we will just rerun the GOSEC. So I don't know if you remember, to rerun the tool where you just change one or two parameters, you click on one of the output. Then you click on the arrow that runs into circle. 
And what you need to change here is just the category. So we use CAG instead of gene ontology. And in the output, we don't want to have a plot because we can't have plot for CAG. And then we run the tool. So now we have only two outputs because we don't have plots, so not three, two. And similarly, we will have, you know, this output will be for each CAG pathway, which are the differentially exposed genes inside. And for this one, it will be for each CAG pathway, it is uh, overexpressed, overrepresented, sorry, or underrepresented. So now it's running and I come back when it's done. So the second GOSEC uh, I've finished and we can have a look. So here are the categories and the genes. And we can see that there is 128 lines, including a header, so 127 uh, pathways. And here we can see the result for the value, the p-values, and here, if we what we want is uh, in column six, the overrepresented. So if we just filter, um, so on the ranked. And we just say that we want column cis to be below 0 0.05. And uh, what I forgot last time is to skip the first one, which is a header. And this should show us the overrepresented. I'm back when it's done. So the filter is done and we have three lines. One is in fact a header and then we just have two uh, cake pathways. One which is uh, 0, 0, 010. Uh, and this is exactly the one that was here. So the glycolysis. And the second one is um, the zero one one zero zero and this one is all metabolic pathways so it's a huge huge pathway uh, i don't do it but you can check uh, what are the underrepresented uh, cake pathway and if we are interested to project the log to fall change on the picture of the cake pathway, there is a tool that is called PathView that allows to do this. And it needs two uh, inputs, the pathway IDs to plot, either just one ID or a file with more than one ID, and a tabular file with the gene uh, and the log to fall change. So to generate this, uh, we will uh, get the log to fall change from the gene with significant adjusted p-value, as we don't want to plot log to fall change for genes that are not significant, because it can be just um, um, a high log to fall change, but with a high variation, and this we don't want to, to display. So what we will do is to use the cut tool and use one and three on the output that was gene uh, with significant, I can't remember the input that we are using. Uh, yes, genes with significant adjusted p-value. So this is what we have and we can check uh, 26, that it's indeed the third. So I check here and I check, we have a header and it's locked to for change. Perfect, so I run the tool. And when it's done, I resume the video. 
So Keta's brand, I just checked the output, clicking on the eye. And indeed, I have the gene ID and then the log to pole change. So I will rename the data set, click on the pencil, and then change the name to genes with significant adjusted p-value and their log to pole change. OK. Um, the, so as I said, the tool that we are using is uh, PassView. And here, either if we want to plot a single pathway, we put the name here, for example, 0, 0, 0 10. But if you want um, more than one here, you need to specify um, a, a data set that will contain uh, one column with cake pathways to plot. So to do so, we just go to the tutorial and copy these two lines, go to upload data, best page data, we paste it. And this time, this time I think about giving a name and click to plots. And I can, uh, and it will be a tabular. So here I can select the 49. Does it have a header? Mm, no, it was just two line. The species to use is the fly. Do we have a gene data? Uh, yes, it's the gene yeah, with significant adjusted p-value. Does the file have a header? If I click here, I can see, yes, it has. And what is the format for gene data? It's ensemble gene ID. And do we have a compound data file? No. And then we leave everything by default. And we run the tool. I resume the video when it's done. So pass view has finished. I click, this is a list with two data sets and they correspond to the two pathways. So if I check the first pathway, which was one that was um, overrepresented, we can see indeed that we have quite a lot of uh, red. That means that these are the genes that are overexpressed, but also some greens that are genes that are um, underexpressed, which can be a bit counterintuitive, the color code. Um, so this is a type of uh, representation that we can do. And here it was an example of a uh, pathway that was underrepresented and indeed we see that we don't have a lot of colors just uh, two genes that have been colored okay so here is a workflow of what we have done uh, with the, this tutorial so we we had fast queues we did some fast queues that we integrated into multi qc we did the cut adapt to be able to uh, trim the width, the bases that were of poor quality. Then we mapped with RNA star and we obtained BAM, but also uh, a log to tell you what was the, the quality of the mapping. We used either in, um, we used infer experiment to uh, get the strandness, but there were also uh, different ways to get the strandness. And then we counted with feature count or with star. And with this, uh, we were able to do a dissect analysis to identify the genes that were um, differentially expressed. And with this, we could do some go analysis, so gene ontology, 
and cake that we visualized with past view. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Uh, you have here the different references that we used. And below there is a feedback form. So please uh, fill this feedback form. This is uh, feedback that we read and this would help us to improve the tutorial. So please do not give the feedback on the video, but just about the manual. With, like, with that, I would like to thank you very much and uh, I hope uh, I will see your comments.